The noob tube has returned in Modern Warfare 2, and although it's only a shadow of its 2009 predecessor, it's still an extremely useful attachment once it's mastered. In today's video, I'll break down all the details. I'll be discussing its basic handling characteristics, its damage area and kill zone, how it performs against equipment and the bomb squad perk, and finally how to aim with absolute precision ensuring that every single grenade hits its target. In Modern Warfare 2, we have four grenade launchers to choose from, all from the underbarrel category and each from a different weapon manufacturer. We've got the SPW 40mm, the KL 40M2, the Hellscream 40mm, and the TL-40 Fire Drake. Regardless of their different names, they all fire the exact same 40mm explosive projectile, and they all share the exact same performance characteristics. They're available to be equipped on every AR and battle rifle, as well as one shotgun, the KV Broadside. Once equipped, you'll need to manually switch to grenade launcher mode by toggling your select fire. After firing your last grenade, your weapon will auto-swap to its alternate firing mode, which allows for very quick follow-up shots to finish off damaged enemies. It's worth mentioning that even though tuning is available on the grenade launcher underbarrel attachment, it won't provide a noticeable benefit. As you can see here, the projectile velocity is virtually identical, even when tuned to opposite ends of the spectrum. As a result, you might as well tune for handling speed and leave it at that. The maximum ammo capacity is very low. In multiplayer, you'll max out at one in the chamber and one in reserve. Warzone will be more forgiving and allow one in the chamber and six rounds of reserve ammo. Unfortunately, in multiplayer, topping up is only possible by using an ammo crate field upgrade. Even the scavenger perk only provides conventional rounds and won't allow you to restock your 30mm grenade ammunition. The grenade launcher will deal damage within a radius of 5 meters, dealing its maximum damage at the point of impact and dropping off as you move further from the explosion. Landing a grenade anywhere in the yellow area will deal at least some level of damage. The kill zone against an enemy with full health is a radius of 2.5 meters, which is the smallest kill radius of all explosives in-game and requires a high level of precision in order to be successful. Against a fully plated enemy in Warzone, a single grenade won't be enough and you'll need a minimum of two grenades within the damage area to secure a kill. The grenade launcher is also limited by range. You'll need to be at least eight meters away from your target or the grenade won't explode. If you encounter an enemy up close, you'll still have lethal potential, but you'll need to treat the launcher like a slug shotgun. A hit anywhere on the body will secure a kill. Without an impact, the grenade will explode exactly four seconds after it's launched. As a result, extremely high trajectory shots won't be possible on nearby targets. The grenade launcher can be countered in several ways. The bomb squad perk will keep the enemy alive and you'll need to follow up with bullets to secure a kill. However, a direct hit will always result in a kill, even with bomb squad equipped. Unfortunately, the riot shield also fully counters the grenade launcher, and even a direct hit to the shield won't deal any damage to the shield user. Enemy trophy systems will also destroy grenades fired from the launcher before they can do any damage. With such a small kill radius, accurate aiming is essential. Projectile ballistics is a very complex topic, which I've simplified as much as possible in order to provide reasonable results at close to mid-range in typical game situations using the grenade launcher's built-in aiming reticle. It's worth mentioning that this system functions best when hip-firing the launcher. While it is possible to aim down sight, there's no benefit in doing so, as all this does is introduce idle sway and reduces accuracy. 
The first step is determining the reticle's baseline range for your particular field of view setting. This tells us how far the grenade will travel forward while it drops from the center point of aim to the lower hash mark on the reticle. For my preferred field of view setting of 110, this results in a value of 25 meters. This value puts the grenade launcher reticle's height into visual context, revealing how much we need to offset our aim to hit targets at various ranges. When aiming at a target 25 meters away, I'll be able to use the lower hash mark as my aiming point. As a demonstration, I'll be attempting to hit the lower edge of this banner. At 25 meters, I can use the lower hash mark as my aiming crosshair and deliver accurate results. At 50 meters, I'll need to aim twice as high. Moving here. My goal here is to land my grenade between the two sets of windows. After lining up my lower hash mark on target, which would normally be used for a 25 meter shot, I can see that my center crosshair is aligned near the roof. This is where I'll need to position my lower hash mark to land a 50 meter grenade. Without walls nearby, you'll get the best results by aiming at the enemy's feet. Fortunately, the same aiming principles apply when aiming at the ground. For this example, I'll use the metal grate as a target. At 25 meters, I'll place my lower hash mark at the base of my mark and fire the grenade. Ranges that fall in between even multiples of the baseline distance will require ballparking the reticle adjustment. For a shot of about 12 and a half meters, I can aim at the midpoint between my center hash mark and my lower hash mark and produce accurate results. Even though the noob tube has obviously taken a significant nerf from its original version, it's still completely usable and actually quite viable. And since many premium gun setups don't require all five attachment slots, you can add the grenade launcher underbarrel and have virtually no negative trade-off to your current weapon setup. Of course, this is only my opinion, and now it's time to hear from you guys. Is the noob tube a viable attachment as is, or does it need a change? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one.